There's gonna be bloopers, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. Oh, yeah. He's probably recording this right now. <laughs> it is recording right now. <laughs> So it's Natalie here, Natalia, simply Natalia, like you guys know, and this is my first English interview with uh, someone that has an incredible story to tell, and we're here at her gym, Now Fitness, and I'd like to introduce to you guys, you like Nina or Marina? Nina. Nina. Just <laughs> Nina. <laughs> Nina, um, thank you for allowing me to come here and interview you. You're first very of all. welcome. It takes time out of your day to do this. Um, I wanted to interview you because your story, I've been following it since you told me, mm -hmm. you know, we wrote back on social media, we've been following each other on Instagram, and you said, you know, I never thought this was possible, but I see that you did it, and I'm going to do it too, and I see you're doing it. Yeah, yeah. It's not like you're going to do it, you've done it, yeah. you're doing it, and you're doing much more than just transform your body, you're, you created a space here to achieve much more, I can see that, and we'll get into that. Yeah. But. Uh, I was reading the blog yesterday that you have, which is um, polaprincessnyc.com, and I read something that I did not know about your journey, and mm -hmm. I, you know, I wanted to start there, that you found yourself at a doctor's office mm -hmm. for to get surgery, yeah, and then the doctor asked, well, what have you tried? Mm -hmm. So before we go into that, it was interesting to see that you did not have an obese past. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. Yeah. You had an accident. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little more before it all started. Um, well, I mean, I was very, um, I, I would say I was popular in high school. You know, like I had, you know, my boyfriend and, you know, my group of friends and, you know, the, it was a good years for you. Yeah, that was the amazing. Bullying, yeah. Bad years. Um, and I feel like, I mean, coming from a background of psychology, I feel like that gave me a certain level of confidence. I also had, um, an amazing childhood with my grandparents. I was raised by my grandparents, but they adored me, right? So it's like I always grew up with all of this positive reinforcement and support and... Um, Were you the only child? I was. Oh. I was the only grandchild too. Oh, wow. Yes. So <laughs> that was huge. Um, so then when I got into this car accident, um, I was crossing the street and I got literally hit by a car. How um, old were you? I was, it was a week before my Sweet 16. Yeah, um, it was in September. My birthday's in October, so it was late September, and um, I was in the hospital for weeks. Uh, like I had a, my broken clavicle, I actually never healed right, um, and it was just like I guess steroids and drugs, and they pump you with stuff, and I couldn't move, and I never had to really watch what I ate because I was very active. I was like a, a, a boy, you know, like I was always running. The boy. Yeah, I was always running the streets with the you know boys, like playing basketball. I was never good at it, but I did it right. <laughs> So um, you weren't that type of girl that came home from school, ate bag chips in front of the computer yeah, or no. in front of the TV. You were yeah. always active, active outside. at the mall or yeah. rollerblading or doing something. something. Yeah. So now I'm confined to this room, right, for like six months, and everyone's bringing me like donuts. Six months. Yeah. I, well, I was in the hospital for two, but at home, like two I, months in the hospital. No, no, two weeks. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Two weeks but in the anyway, hospital. Anyway, it was a really bad accident for you to stay two yeah. weeks in the hospital. Um, but then, you know, I very quickly gained the weight. Because everybody's, you know, coming over with ice cream, with donuts, with, stu with stuff I never thought twice of not having. I you did it just like mine was like, but what happened that you gained so much weight? Yeah. Nothing happened. I mean, I understand the car accident, but what happened was they were comforting you, but you weren't. You didn't feel the need to be comforted, but still you weren't thinking. Mm -hmm. You did it without thinking. It was and mindless. You, and it's mindless. It's mindless. Yeah. And then when you realize it, it's like, what happened? Yeah. And even, even, let me tell you something. For a long time, you know how, and I feel this way sometimes with now that I've lost weight, you don't really realize how big you are or how small you are. No. Because sometimes I'll see some small space. I can't fit through there. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, yes, I can. <laughs> you know? Um, but then there was, I remember there were times when I was big when I would see a space that I would think that I couldn't be like, oh, no, I can't. <laughs> You know what I mean? So like, I never feel like, but I don't look at people that way either. So no. maybe that's why I didn't look at myself that way. Some people do. I, I, I was not one of those people. So the gain, the weight gain was relatively fast. It was, it was really fast. But did you, once you've gotten to your major weight, which was around 310 yeah. or more, cause more. you don't know. Yeah. Um, 
were you were you frustrated with yourself? Were you I was upset? in denial for a really long time. Were you really in denial? Yeah. And how did that work? Like, did anyone tell you, like, Nina, you got to do something? Like your mom, your grandparents? Um. Uh, you know, yeah and no. My really? grandparents never. My grandparents really? never. I mean, I was, I had my my boyfriend. You know, he was still your boyfriend. Yeah. I mean, and and that's when I feel like I started to. When we broke up is when I feel like I started to really pay attention to how I looked. Only until I feel like I went when I got to college and um, and after we broke up and you know. I think I, I took a, a class because in my college I had to take cl a class and that kind of started it. Then like, you know, having a crush on someone or liking someone and then like people not paying attention to you. you and, you know, um, I always say that um, when you're fat, it's like you're invisible sometimes. People either make stupid remarks, right? Which I can't say how. Careless. Happens. Yeah. Um, they'll say stuff like, oh, you're so pretty. Why don't you just lose some weight? Like, your like, face is so gorgeous. gorgeous. Yes. yes. I hate that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. You're so beautiful. Why but don't you, you want just to know so something? Weight? Last summer, I, uh, before I decided to open this, like, I've pretty much maintained my weight for the last year. I had bigger, bigger goals, which I'm going to, you know, reassume once I, this, my life has priorities. Down. Right. Yeah. But, um, like, people started to, to tell me that I looked too skinny. You know, so I was just like, you know, it's funny because like, you know, it was you're so pretty. Why don't you lose some weight? And now it's like, oh, you need to put some weight back on. Like, it's like you never you'll never stop. Um, if you try to please everyone, please everyone you'll not you never you're go crazy. Out. Yeah. So it wasn't the boyfriend. No, it wasn't that you were feeling unsatisfied. No, with you. You just really didn't. It didn't bother you. So what was the. It started to bother me when I got into college. When you got into college, yeah. Um, when I when I did want to take that, I took a step class. That's what I, I feel like. If if you go back to it all, I feel like that's where it started. I had to take a gym class in college, and um, this step instructor was so embracive. Like she put so much attention on me. Like there's a class full of girls, and she would always she'd be coming to the front. How are your knees? You know, whatever. Don't give up. Like always, always. She's she's like, like, why is she bothering me? Yeah. <laughs> and she would just be like, you know, if you can't, just like, you know, step back and forth. Just don't stop. Whatever you do, don't stop. And like, I you didn't realize how big you were. I mean, I didn't, I don't, you know, I. She looked at you and she's like, okay, I don't think she's going to handle this class. And you were like, this is just a step class. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I kind of just, I lost so much weight. I mean, I gained it back later, but, and then, you know, whatever. But that, that, like, I had lost so much weight. And I was like, oh my God. Like, I started to really start to pay attention to how I look. And then, um, Again, I feel like it was kind of like about attention, like, you know, like I started realizing the world and the way it views you. And then I went on a job interview and over the phone, the guy was amazing. And I get there and he treated me like the scum of the earth. And I knew it was my weight. You know what I mean? Like he was so rude and he was so like oh we don't we don't even like I, I think he said something we don't even we're not hiring or something like that like you have you know like and I was just like okay you know and then that's like I'm in college and I was trying to find a bunch of different jobs and like I felt like over the I mean I speak very well I'm very, yes. I'm bright you know and then like you go in there and then they see you and then it was kind of like it's that first impression thing yeah and it's that judgmental thing yeah and discrimination mm -hmm. that's exactly what it is it's it's you know that because they see you and they're like oh you know I don't want you're overweight so you're lazy yeah you're that, overweight, exactly. you're not attractive you're yeah. overweight and that's gonna scare their customers yeah so um so I just started seeing how, how it like you know negatively affected and then yeah. I went to the doctor and she kind of <clears throat> what what was the decision between all of this occurrences and you going to the doctor what was that like okay you know what I'm gonna go to the doctor I'm gonna get surgery what what was this decision take? <laughs> that, I feel like it was my mom. <laughs> like, but my family was, you know, like, you know, it's not healthy, you know, whatever. And um, my mom really, really, really uh, wanted me to be healthy, you know. And um, my father used to was always concerned. I was a big smoker too. I was huge, like, you know, really? yeah. Like my life was like Starbucks smoking and like studying i mean you know that uh -huh. i was just i feel like what well, after with the the okay i'm gonna quickly go back to a little bit um the year that i broke up with my ex-boyfriend because he cheated on me he, he he cheated on me and he got to go pregnant and then i mean this whatever. anyway <laughs> we can edit that yeah. and um 
And she happened to be my best friend. Oi. Since I was a child, <laughs> since I was a child. And then my grandparents died two weeks apart. So there was a lot that a lot so of the, trauma Jesus. that year. So I lost like everybody that was important to me. Like my best friend, my boyfriend, um, my grandparents who were like all Whoa, your life. life. Oh. My whole huge support system. So now I was like I thank God that I joined like with my mom because like that made us closer because you know we know like she didn't really we were more friends growing up like you know uh -huh. so um, what ended up happening was that like now it's like I have a whole new life like without any support except for my mom you know um, but I wasn't used to having support from my mom so it was like I had to relearn how to live in a way you know um, to trust. Yeah, for, for in so many ways. So, um, I think I started to pay more attention to how I look, to how the world perceives me, to all of those things. Plus, taking the psychology class, you know, all of, you know, pursuing my master's in counseling um, and my bachelor's in psych, like that really, really for me um, started to make me look inward. Am I really happy? Am I denying, you know, the way that the world looks at me it, like because you know i was single for like five years after that that was really traumatizing like i didn't want to let anybody close to me you know but you know did i really not want to let people close to me or did i just know that they would not want me because i was big or accept me because i was big so you know i spent a lot of time thinking why was i happy with my appearance the way it was when it's clearly not healthy you know when you know it's clearly stopping me from getting a job when i'm so smart you know and and then like you know there's so much i could do but i'm not healthy and i'm not doing something positive for myself at all like what am i doing i'm locking myself in a room and i'm reading i'm studying and i'm smoking and i'm drinking coffee you know like and let me ask were you compulsively eating i wasn't i don't think you didn't i was. have a compulsive issue with food no thank god because I still yeah I don't have I'm not I was never like um, junk food no I mean it was just really the lack of exercise and all it was a that. horrible lifestyle I didn't eat great you know I did eat junk but like I didn't I didn't know what to eat yeah yeah like I mean I would probably like I had like a bagel and cream cheese for breakfast every day you know like uh, pasta like probably big bowls of I can eat a lot right so right. so it's not like I had to like constantly eat like I just but it wasn't this compulsive eating that you would eat even hidden from people, no no yeah which was my issue yeah for me it wasn't you know and, and thank god like I said for me now that I feel like um, you know some people are like how do you still eat chocolate because I, I never because it's not it's not your addiction yeah you have control over it yeah so. so I can have that like you know I'll crave that one piece and I'll have that one piece and then I'm like happy you know sometimes I'll eat the whole bar <laughs> <laughs> but it's not a definite when I decide to have that bite. You know right. what I mean? Um, so yeah. So, so yeah. this re, re um, nighting with your mom in a way of mm -hmm. daughter and mother relationship. Yeah. It's what took you to take that decision to go to the doctor. Yeah, I mean, I started because you wanted to start a healthier lifestyle. I did. When I went for the gastric bypass How consultation, I was like 25, I think, 24, and I had gone to the doctor and. Um, some, it was something with my cholesterol and it wasn't like it was anything like oh my god you're gonna die you know if you don't stop but I knew that's where it was gonna go mm -hmm. but I'm 24 there should be nothing wrong with me nothing I should be I shouldn't even have to go for a checkup until you know what I mean right. so um, that was what started it you know and then again you know I told you like everything else and um, so then I, I you know my, I made an appointment I was like let me just see you know um, I have to say it's probably one of the most traumatizing things of my life really because of several reasons um number one he a lot of people don't know even people who do gastric bypass don't really know what it entails like they are really reorganizing your organs that's what they're doing they're cutting you open they're detaching your they're cutting your stomach in half basically detaching your stomach um, and reconnecting it to like your small intestine, like basically by the reason why it's called a bypass when you do a bypass because you're taking all of the, the large intestines and half of the small intestines and basically everything which we need to absorb nutrients in our body um, is being bypassed and it's just going to the end. So basically you're just eating and pooping, right? And he pulled out a cup of pills and he put them on a cup like, like, uh, like a, a size, an eight ounce cup, right? And he put it down on the table and it, it was filled with vitamins. He goes, you will have to take these every single day for the rest of your life so that you can absorb the nutrients that your body will never, ever be able to get from food. Even if you 
overeat again and your stomach restretches, it will never, because you're bypassing all of the organs that absorb the nutrients, you'll never be able to absorb. And I thank God that I chose this doctor because I know there's a lot of doctors who would have just been like, like, okay, here you go. Yeah, you want to do it? Come on, let's do it. He also um, like felt my skin and whatever. And he was like, oh, and you're definitely going to have to have surgery for your skin after whatever. But you know, I, I, I just, you know, I, I couldn't do it. And then um, I think I did LA Fitness for about a week. And, um, but I don't even know if it was the system as much as it was that I wasn't ready. Right. Point. You, you were, you, yeah. were dis you didn't decide to really change your lifestyle. Yeah. And I don't think I saw the value in losing weight yet. Cause you weren't desperate for it. Yeah. Um, so I was like, all right, let me, I got to try this. Like I, I have to really like, you know, when he sat there and explained everything to me, it's like, I have to really sit and, and give this a try before I permanently change my body. You know, like this is, it's permanent. Like I can't do anything. Once I decide to do this, my body's changed forever. You know, like my organs, not my appearance, my organs, you know, right. that, 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 and I, and I'm, you know, I don't want to get religious, but like that God gave me for a right. purpose exactly. or science, whichever way you want to look at exactly. it, right? Exactly. Which uh, they, they're there for a reason, right? So I don't know. I so just a shortcut to something that might not end up really well. Yeah. Nothing so. against it, but even if people that do it, if they don't change their mentality, they just go right back. The thing is, you know, I, I feel like it's kind of cliche to say now because everyone says it, but it is, it's a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle. It, you know, if you're trying to look hot for a photo shoot or if you're trying to, you know, try to impress someone or get a girl or whatever, you're never, it's never, never that's it's just way too much work for It is. For that. People don't understand. It's like, oh, I just want to look hot. <laughs> like, no, <laughs> it's too much work just to look hot. <laughs> yeah, it really, you, you know, like it's a lifestyle. You know? It is, you know, and you have to love every second of it. So when you left that doctor's office, yeah, what did you do? I bought a um, a step at home because I had gone back and I remembered I had lost weight with, with the with step aerobic. So I bought a step at home and I made like I sat home and I like researched beats per minute or whatever and I, I made myself this banging playlist, right? <laughs> I, I'm crazy like that, right? And I started to do like the step at home and then um, I tried to find people who I wanted to go to the gym with and kind of, you know, I, I would say I spent about two years like going back and forth with like doing it, but not doing it, you know? And then like, I think um, a lot of times, it, you know, and I hear my clients say this all the time now where they're like, you know, it was somebody's birthday. You know, it was my cousin's uncle's whatever's quinceanera. It was my friend's dog's um, anniversary, <laughs> something. It's always it's something. Always, especially when you're starting to change. It's yeah. Always something. So, you know, but I didn't, you know, for me, you know, these are the people that I love. This is the important things in life. I can't not do these things. Right. right? Um, but then, you know. I remember when I, I had a conversation with my best friend. He lives in, in Houston. And um, he said to me, <laughs> he was like, is this about them or is it about you? He was like, you can do this. I've seen you do this. He was like, but you have to stop waiting on everybody. You were born by yourself. He's like, you're going to die by yourself. You have to do this by yourself. And if you don't do it by yourself, you're not going to do it. That's exactly what I did. Yeah. I've done everything and I dragged all my friends into it or they dragged me. And it only felt like I took five steps forward and ten back mm -hmm. because the moment they gave up, I gave up too. Because mm -hmm. I felt like I could only do things if other people would do them. Yep. I never felt. I'm like, no. I yeah. wasn't born to follow people around. Yeah. I started to sit and think how much time I had spent at the gym and how I hadn't really lost that much weight. Maybe like 20 pounds. I, I don't remember. I hadn't lost that much weight. And I was thinking about how much effort I had put in. And I was like, this is my health, right? And this I really, really want to drill home to everybody, right? Um, this is my health, right? So if I wouldn't take off of work, which is just money, and I know everybody wants money, but it's just money. It'll come, That's it'll exactly go. That's exactly my concept. Yeah. If I wouldn't miss work, then I can't miss the gym. That's how I live my life. And then I had also met him, my, my personal trainer. I'm pointing like they can see. <laughs> I had also met my personal trainer and... Um, and you know, he, I had just started working with him, right? And he would say stuff to me. And, and it wasn't like, in, like you know, he, he, he freaking motivates you in this way that you don't even realize. I feel like, you know, like he would say stuff like, have you been to the gym? Have you worked out since the last time I saw you? But no, like, you know, because again, I, it wasn't my lifestyle. Like I'm here with you, you know, like why would I come when I don't have to be here? You know, but then, um, you know, now I, I, I had to shift in the way that I think and from, you starting, you said 275. Mm -hmm. So you went down from 310, which is 
like 30 pounds. Yeah, like I did that like on 30, own, 35 yeah. pounds. How much do you weigh now? 165. Wow. So you went from, you've lost 140 pounds. Yeah. And that's been training, finding your way through the proper diet. Mm -hmm. And what do you, you continue to do now? Um, the last year uh, I, I've maintained is what I've been really doing. This now the the, the summer I started to like go hard again a little what bit. What was your goal when you first started? One eighty. Really? Yeah. Wow. Right. You never thought you would be here. You no, know? never. Oh just my like god. Me, like I just want to lose some weight. Yeah, one eighty. Yeah. And what is your ultimate goal now that you've seen that you've overcame all <laughs> you set out to do? Yeah. And you see now the power that you have. Also that you have a full time job mm -hmm. as a guidance counselor. Yeah. <laughs> you know that's that's a lot of work it right? is and now you open new business yeah I mean what is your goal now I want to help obese people lose weight is what I want um, I know that I need my training license I know that I need to get a nutritional certification but I decided to do this as the as the second thing in my life right now so I can't I don't have you know I don't have the time for that but I do want to do that I definitely want to do that when I saw you that's I, I feel like I kind of kicked it up with the with the documenting everything because I was like I could help people too yeah. like they, like every because someone might not see you that sees me and then so when I was helping one of my friends I told her I was like look I know it's hard to put yourself out there but you should do it even I, if you do it in private right now right now and then, and then when you feel better yes if not you're gonna regret it yeah now she has more followers than me <laughs> Because she goes hard and she's like, you know, it is amazing. It is. You know, and I'm just like, you know, you never know which one of us will touch somebody. Exactly. Right? And then, you know, so that that's that was really um a huge thing for me was like seeing you. It was just like, you know, I was at a point where it was just like, you know, kind of like, is this gonna happen for me? And then I was like, oh my god, all I needed was to know that I can. Yes. Yeah. I had a video that I that I pulled pull my skin yeah. and there was still a lot of flab. Yeah, yeah. And then that's you're gonna have to do that. Yeah. Well, today I don't have that flat anymore. I still have a lot be in the tush area yeah, because yeah. that's my legs were like, and my dad says tree trunks. They were like <laughs> huge yeah. legs. But my stomach, I have absolutely no more skin. Yeah. And that's the thing. That's like, I know, and, and I feel like that for me, so back to your question of what is my goal? Um, <laughs> my goal is that, right? Complete skin reparation, right? Like, like as far as my body can take it. You don't cool. supplement? Um, I do. Glutamine and protein. And that's that's it? it. Yeah. I mean, you I should, should really look at you should but. really look into because that I'm I'm pretty sure that let's say thirty a good thirty forty percent of my skin has gone back because of the help. Of that's what he told me. Yeah. He told me he said that your I'm, skin. You know, it's it's not a miracle because I worked my ass off yeah. for what I. But with out supplementation, it would take. It would not have the results I have only in three years. Yeah. If it wasn't for the supplementation that's what he told me he was like you'll be so surprised about how you, you and he said and because see my whole thing is i just wanted I'm not to talking be, about drugs no I'm no talking yeah. about supplements yeah people yeah. don't know they're like oh i'm not gonna take people like stuff it's steroids yeah no, no there's a difference not. between what you buy at vitamin shop yeah <laughs> supplementations yes and black market steroids yes there's <laughs> a big, there's difference. big difference so my goal is for like to create something for the next five years which mm -hmm. is to um get my phd in psychology sports nutrition personal nutrition, childhood nutrition, yeah. and uh, have a personal trainer license. I don't want to train, train anyone, yeah. but I want to have that knowledge so I can build projects Yes, for and people I, I, who really, and I'm not like trying to beg people here become my client. I only want people that really, really want to leave and mm -hmm. need help to get. So all the frustration that I've put in and all that I've learned by falling and tripping, yeah. I can help people avoid that. Agreed. You can understand because yeah. a lot of the things that we went through, we made mistakes. And yeah. We had to turn, we hit a wall, turn back, go around. Wow. Yeah. You know, and we can help people avoid that. But I want to have the right education to be able to do that. I don't plan on doing it. I start now in September, but I don't plan on opening. You know. Uh, a place like this mm -hmm. for the next five years or something. Yeah, yeah. But with all the knowledge, were you at your highest weight? Did you stop taking care of yourself? Like, did you stop doing your nails? Did you stop putting on makeup? Did you stop trying to dress up to look better? What I used to do is I used to stay home. 
so that I didn't have to feel that way. I see. You know what I mean? So I didn't not take care of myself. I just avoided, you avoided the world. Yes, is what I did. Because I had enough love, right? So like I could just stay right here. And then, you know, but that's a form of denial too because yeah. you're not really living your best life. And that's what I feel like for me, I mean, it's in my resume for, for when, you know, when I go for counseling positions. That's what I want to do. Like you said, it's selling hope, right? I want people to help people live the best life that they can live. Yeah. And you don't have to wait to get to your goal to be happy. No, you have to, no. You have to decide that you want to be happy. Yeah. It's a decision. And that's why I tell people all the time. You, it's a decision. Like, you have to celebrate everything. Everything. I celebrated crossing my legs. Yeah. My legs were so oh my big. I <laughs> yes. could not cross my legs. One time. The oh day my- I went like this in the bus and I didn't have to, like, literally, like, get a cramp yeah. for doing it. It was like, I took a picture. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, I crossed my legs. How about one time last time? I put my ring on. Yeah. I couldn't wear my wedding ring for two years. Wow. I couldn't wear it. Oh my God. So people, you know, they think like, oh, when I lose 150 pounds, no, you're not going to be happy. You're going to have to, let me tell you something. I am beyond my goal today Mm -hmm. and there's still things that I need to work on. Yes. I'm not talking about my body. I'm talking about life. It's life, life, people. Yes. (laughs) It's That's what it is. Like I remember last summer I was sitting down and I had my phone in my hand and it fell through my thighs. I was like, oh my God. My, it used to be my it used to, my phone, but hey, it went right through. <laughs> and you know what? I, it used to be my tabletop, right? It was like I could put everything there. Like you know, I have big thighs, like you said, tree trunks. Um, so like when I was, and then another thing, I always used to see my skinny friends, right? They, when they were driving, like they would kind of like do this kind of stuff, you know, like when oh, they're chilling in the car. I and I feel like that either. What? Are you I, crazy? I don't think yeah. I can do that. I still don't think I can do yeah. that. But it's just because I'm sore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes that's a whole different story yeah um but yeah crossing you know but that's the thing like you said celebrating every single day like you know sometimes when pe- i'm sure you get this all the time people email me all the time and they're like you know like oh my god i'm at this point or i've lost this much weight and how you know there's so much more to go and it's just like think of how much you just lost you know like like i feel like we're so it's, again the psychology is why it's so important to, to really understand the psychology behind it it's that we look at it as this big goal like that's like unattainable but you know what like just like a phd to, to most people seems like so unattainable it's, or to me right now that's how it's but, starting to feel <laughs> yeah but you know what it is a long journey it, it is, is journey. but you have to look at it every single test every single semester every you know if you sit and focus on the fact that you're going to spend the next whatever if someone was just starting out eight years you know to get a phd i mean how many people would do it? But you know what? You don't think of it that way. You know, you think of it as, you know, I'm going to incorporate it into my life. Exactly. It's, eight years is going to pass by, isn't it? Yes. If you're still living, it's yep. going to go by. It's and then eight years later, you're going to be like, you know, I should have done, done it. Exactly. And you know what? Um, I mean, like there was a situation for me this year, which in addition to, you know, working full time and, and opening this, um, I was kind of seeing a guy and kind of broke my heart <laughs> but like so that that for me was like huge because like I did want to eat all the time and you know you want to just stay home and cry yeah. and like eat cookies you know like that's just what you want to do and then like I can't say I didn't do it for at least one or two days but like you know I mean I, I, I because it's a lifestyle because I thought of it as forever I forced myself and you know what maybe I didn't run as fast that day maybe I didn't lift as heavy that day maybe whatever but I got up and I got here and I did it you right. know and that was all like I just kept telling myself and there were days that I didn't you know but I, like I you know what I do this is an awesome thing to keep track of okay I keep an, a calendar on my wall and even though I work out every single day, I mark on my calendar the days that I worked out. So like it'll, it's like a, a, a just you know the the, a the box okay. monthly calendar, and I'll put chest, uh, cardio, 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 chest, whatever, or legs or whatever. Um, and I, I still do that because when I was bigger and I was trying to, to go harder, right, and go more than the three to four days a week, um, I wanted to visually be able to see how many days I had been there. So, oh my god, I love this so much. We should do more of these videos. We should. But like talk about other stuff, about her, especially you with the background in psychology. Yeah. That, should, I mean, we could. We, we could definitely meet like, I don't know, once a month or once every two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. You know, that would be awesome. So, let's wrap it up. Okay. Do you have a message? A, a more oh, message ah. that you want to give this? Um, okay. So, I will, I, I'll kind of focus on the camera. The only thing that I really do want to um, drill home, if I, if I can, is that you can do it right um there is no magic pill you just gotta start somewhere you just gotta decide to start and commit and 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 nothing is nothing is handed to you as you start i feel like as layers start coming off i'm not talking only about weight 
we talked about weight, but it, it, this reflects in your life in general. You know, right now I'm using the all the all of my experience and what you said mm -hmm. in a new journey, mm -hmm. and it fits the same way. It's just it's just not weight loss. Yeah. It's just now education. Yeah, and I'm furthering my career, but I feel like it, I'm just restarting the journey. So as you get in, as you start. It's hard. You don't have that motivation. No, it's so it, hard. There is no motivation. I tell people, there is no motivation. It, you don't buy it. You <laughs> don't have it. It comes after layers start coming off. Mm -hmm. as, as you start drilling into it and going without forcing yourself to do it without any motivation at all, that's when stuff starts to come together. Yeah. That fat starts peeling off or the knowledge starts coming off and you start to realize I can do this, I can do this, and that's when the motivation yeah. comes. I feel like I feel like also, and this will be like a you know kind of going on the on the uh, calendar thing. Another thing is documenting everything. Like right. we, we kind of did it um, virtually, right? Yeah. But like you know, seeing that I can now lift this, I can now run this. Like I started running, right? I, I posted about it last night. Um, I never in my life imagined that I would be running the streets at, for three miles ever, ever coming from praying at two miles per hour on a treadmill. You know what I mean? That I'd be able to run. Exactly. And that's the thing is that it's four years later. I'm able to do that. Like you can't look at what you could do now as a predictor of what you're capable of. Right. Yes. You, yes. That is so true. You can't go by other people's journeys. Mm -hmm. You can use them as encouragement. But everyone has their own. Yeah. Just because we've gotten to a certain point, you can go further. Yeah. Or you can find out that you going the same path, but you decide this is not what I want. Mm -hmm. I want to, you know, be a yoga instructor. Yeah. The fitness is so, so big. huge. Yeah. You know, you use our story as a kickstart of motivation that if they did it, I can do it too. But you can do so much more. You yeah. just have to want it. So yeah, so that's that, that's really the point is that you can do anything. Exactly. Yeah. So guys, <laughs> if you have ideas for other videos with yeah. Nina, I definitely have a whole bunch that I, you know, <laughs> try to schedule in. So if you like the video, click I like the video for us and I really hope you enjoy it. Sorry because we talked a lot because we just put three years of conversation into an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.